So I've had some questions about how to bring the Helmsaurus vocabulary into library catalogs. Um, a bit ago I created a proof of concept that had a sample program and XSLTs to help people use it. Um, uh, I need to update it to because there were some changes made to um, the version 3 of the vocabulary. But since this has come up a couple of times um, over the last couple of weeks, I figured the easiest way to do it would be to simplify the processing uh, for folks who just want to point and click um, into Mark Edit. So um, I'm going to show you a plugin that I've been working on. So um, you'll manage it with the plugin manager. There'll be a checkbox to turn it on. And once it's turned on, uh, you'll find it here. turn the debug window on. So basically you point to the JSON file, so it'll go ahead and point to version 3. Um, I'll update these as they go along. Um, you pick a save file, so this is where it's going to process the data to. You decide whether you want it in mark XML or mark. And I'm going to go ahead and process, start the process, and I will pause the video as I go after uh, a minute. Um, because this takes a little bit. So essentially start the process and the debug window will tell you what's going on. If you don't want to, if you don't care, then you can just turn that off. Um, but essentially it's going out to the, uh, the file, the, the, the server. It's collecting the JSON LD file. Um, when that file comes back, um, the, the way that the uh, sample code that I put together worked as you would um, download the JSON file and then in MarkEdit translate that link data JSON LD to um, an XML graph and then from there MarkEdit had there was an XSLT and a small sample application that would translate that data to Mark XML and then after that file was generated you could use uh, uh, mark edit to take it from mark xml back to mark um, so uh, what i ended up doing uh, this time around um, uh, because uh, some of the the way that i did the translation um, is no longer supported in it's supported in the dotnet framework but not the dotnet core which is the version that's um, designed for multiple operating systems where Microsoft's putting a lot of their work, um, partly due to security concerns, used to be able to embed uh, C-sharp snippets um, using an extension into the uh, uh, XSLT. You can do that with the framework. You can't with the uh, core. Um, MarkEdit's written in .NET Core, um, so it's portable across other operating systems. And so um, to fix that, what I went ahead and did is inside the, the um, uh, plugin, the tool uh, basically processes rather than through an XSLT, there's a, uh, just a small function in the application that handles the, uh, the processing of the, the, um, the XML file. So I'm going to go ahead, you can see that it's uh, processing, it's set as a, on a modulus so that it updates periodically so you can see what number you're on. Um, originally I did it so it was flipping the numbers all the time, but that was a little problematic. Uh, the process takes a little while because um, part of the reason for needing a plugin like this is that the, the link data file that you get, the JSON file, is essentially just a bunch of URIs. Um, in order to use it in a library catalog, you need to go out to those URIs and get the, uh, the labels. Um, and so what the tool is doing is it's capturing each JSON uh, record. It's reassembling the data into um, a, a subject uh, record file, a mark record file and it's following each of the identifiers for the broader, the narrower, the related terms, um, and uh, collecting from those URIs uh, the uh, uh, labels um, as well. So it takes a little while because there's a lot of network traffic happening. Um, I was trying to estimate at one point, there's about 20, so there's 2,836 uh, nodes that are being processed. And I was um, seeing that it was averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of um, about 8 to 10 
network requests per record. So let's say 10. So if you add a zero to that number, you're actually doing 28,000 plus requests to the, um, the uh, vocabulary in order to get the JSON files and then process it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, uh, and I will come back when it's finished. All right, so we're back. So the process is finished. Um, I went ahead and told that I wanted to create a mark record based on the extension, whether it's .xml or .mrc, decides whether or not the program saves it as a mark XML file only or a JSON file. Uh, the uh, debug window tells you what it's been doing. It's finished, so now I can go and find a file that I saved. data now in um, Mark so that it can be loaded into a traditional library catalog, uh, including the, um, in the 550, the subfield W, to tell you whether it's a broad or an error term, uh, the uh, subfield 0, and the subfield A for the, pri the, uh, the prefix. Um, I'll uh, continue tinkering around with this a little bit. Um, and. Uh, make updates as necessary. Uh, I really wanted to keep it as an XSLT file so that folks could make their own changes to it. Um, I'm thinking that if there are places where folks would like to include um, their own data, um, I can look at ways to make that happen. Uh, but uh, uh, now, um, this is kind of what I'm working on and, and how this will end up uh, getting finished. Okay.